Hey fellow gamers, uh, for this video um, I am going to try to demonstrate hooking up this uh, GBS 8200 CGA EGA YUV to VGA converter. Um, and we're going to try to hook this up to a Cruisin' USA with a 29 inch Insignia LCD TV. Uh, I got this TV really cheap. It was $180. Um, I had to go, uh, well, my friend Jeremy actually picked it up for me. This TV was in Wentzville, which was about uh, a little over an hour from my house. It is a discontinued model. Uh, but there's two reasons I wanted it. One, you can see it fits perfectly in this cabinet. Um, there's literally less than half an inch to spare on the sides, and the front literally hugs the glass. So if this works out, all I'm really going to need to do is cut a new bezel out of like you know poster board or something of that nature and uh, call it done uh, I also got a new marquee on the way I gave Jeremy my old marquee for helping me out um, but I got this game really cheap it was $150 uh, plain blind uh, right now I actually uh, have my N64 hooked up to it so it may look a little pixelated here um, I'm hoping that's not the case with the arcade board it does put out uh, a higher resolution uh, obviously than the N64 does. game does run on a medium resolution monitor and here is the original monitor you can see it's got the USA burned in like they always do. It's Wells Gardner U5000 and it's not working and I really didn't want to mess with it. I'm kind of hoping this LCD works out because what I really bought this game for is because it's a smaller profile cabinet um, than most drivers out there so I'm looking for something kind of smaller and more lightweight that I can easily move around my game room. And uh, I think with the LCD in here, it's going to work out pretty good. Um, but I've heard mixed reviews. Overall, these are supposed to be pretty decent for these higher resolution games. Um, I will say I would not recommend doing this right from the get-go for any kind of classic uh, arcade game that puts out a lower resolution. Um, I've tried LCDs in them before and they just do not look right. They uh, look all pixelated and uh, there's always motion blur and things like that. Um, so for classic games I really don't recommend this but um, we're going to be sharing the learning experience together on uh, how to work out in this uh, higher resolution Cruising USA game. Uh, now you can, these are pretty common. I, I got this particular one on eBay. Um, it was $30 shipped to my door. Um, it obviously comes with the converter. It's got all these connections on here. Um, and most of these connections we won't even be using. Um, it comes with some cables here. You'll have to excuse my workbench. It's a mess right now. Uh, this is the power cable. Um, and what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to extend the wires out um, so that I can have this board accessed uh, to the front of the cabinet so that I can uh, adjust the settings uh, while looking at the monitor. It also comes with an 8-pin video cable, um, but I requested this 5-pin uh, cable. And the 5-pin cable is going to go right there. And basically you just have red, green, blue, uh, video ground, and video sync is going to be that white wire there. So on the back of the cabinet here, this is the original video cable. This is actually a 6 and 3 harness is what it's called. Um, but it's got the same five wires. Red, green, blue, which my wire is brown, but that's supposed to be blue. Uh, video ground and then video sync. Um, so I'm going to end up cutting this connector off and splicing in that uh, connector over there. And then the uh, power wire here is just uh, 5 volts and ground. Um, I'll extend the wires and just hook that directly into the switching power supply in the game. So, and one thing I did have to go out and buy too is uh, it didn't come with this uh, VGA cable. I had to go to Walmart and make a quick run to pick that up. And these things aren't getting any cheaper. This was $17, but, you know, what are you going to do? Um, so let me get it all wired up, and uh, we'll uh, turn it on for the first time together and see what happens. Okay, so here we go. We got it all hooked up. This wire here going directly to the 5 volt uh, source on the power supply. 
this going out to the flat screen TV and the new video connector hooked up and ready to go. Alright, let's turn it on and see what we get. Okay, picture's a little dim and a little off center, so we'll need to make adjustments. It is a little pixelated, but not bad at all. I have to say, it actually looks pretty good. So we'll go into the menu here. We got all Chinese text here, so we'll have to go change that to English. There we go. Okay, so we got it, I got it all wired up and set up. It's been about a half an hour setting it up. And I will turn the game on and just show you what it looks like. to excuse Gord from the background. Well, after about a half an hour tweaking, this is what I came up with. Coming to your home in 1995, only on Nintendo Ultra 64. So as you can see, it looks pretty good. There is a little bit of pixelation, but nothing bad at all. It has an awesome picture. I did have to change uh, a lot of the settings to get to this. And like I said, it took me about a half an hour to figure it out. Uh, but I did have to change the resolution to 1024 by 768. It was set to 800 by 600 by default. And the problem with that is I couldn't get the whole picture on there, uh, no matter what I tried. So I spent about 15 minutes figuring that out. And once I figured out I needed to set it to a higher resolution, um, I was finally able to get the whole image on there. The only other thing I really had to tweak was the uh, SP and ST clamp settings. Um, by default, they're set pretty high. I think they're like in the 90s or so. And the problem with that is... Um, if you leave it on for a few minutes, the picture starts going white. Um, and it, it, it can't figure out what kind of brightness it's supposed to be set at. So I set them down. I have the sheet back here, actually. Let me go grab it real quick. I have the clamp ST set to 03 and the clamp SP set to 04 and I had this going for about an hour no problems looks great there's no motion blur no ghosting uh, anything of that nature now this is widescreen obviously but with the remote uh, for the TV I can change it to uh, a 4-3 ratio which looks like that so it's not uh, really stretched, but really on widescreen it doesn't look bad at all. So I'm going to leave it at that. I'll put it back on widescreen here. And, um, you know, they're, they, uh, everything else I really didn't have to adjust too much. The brightness and everything was set okay. The colors were set okay. Um, 
The brightness on the TV was set okay. So this is what it looks like. I'm pretty happy with it. I'll uh, play two quick games here. I'll play uh, one in the widescreen mode and one in the 4-3 uh, ratio. And you can just kind of see for yourself what it looks like. But this picture is amazing. I like it. Ah, you bastard. Let's see if I can hold on to first place. Nope. Okay, so that's widescreen. We'll do a race in full screen. Or 4-3.
Welcome to the Hall of Fame. So there you have it. Cruising USA with an Insignia 29 inch LED TV, or LCD TV rather. And uh, GBS 8200 CGA to VGA converter. You probably won't be able to see it too well on camera, but I made a bezel out of uh, black poster board, which happened to be the perfect size. I didn't even have to cut it down or anything. I uh, just cut a hole for the uh, screen to fit in and a little notch for the remote sensor and that's it. So if you got a medium resolution monitor and you want to go uh, LCD, not bad. Of course I wouldn't do this to any uh, classic games like Pac-Man or anything like that. Um, those games, in my opinion, just do not look right uh, on an LCD screen. Uh, they're too low of a resolution um, to look proper. They'll look pixelated. But a medium resolution game like this, I think this is the way to go. Thanks for watching.